Hello, this is Jock and the coach of the San Francisco Cinderace. Today I'm going to be doing my team builder for my week 7, 8 matchup. Uh, my final matchup of the regular season against the Seattle Snorlax. Uh, this is going to be an interesting one. I feel like I have the better end of the matchup in most cases. The only things I'm really worried about is going to be his Conkelder and his Dracozolt. Uh, the Charizard can be sort of threatening, but I have a couple ways to deal with that. Uh, and the Zatu can be somewhat threatening, but I don't expect him to bring that. Uh, so, let's get into the team that I am bringing. Uh, starting us off, we have Rillaboom G-Max. Uh, we're running Grassy Seed, so that we can get the defense boost against the Snorlax. Um, and on top of that, we're running Grassy Glide, Acrobatics, High Horsepower, Drain Punch. Uh, so the reasoning for Grassy Glide, Good Grass Stab, priority if grassy terrain is up hits the jellicent very nicely um, the only thing we're really scared of on that front would be getting burned from a will-o-wisp we're not carrying heel bell on anything this week so that would be a problem uh, acrobatics is there to hit stuff like the whimsicott it's a good move that turns into 110 power once my grassy seed is gone um, it's going to be boosting my speed when i'm g-max which could be helpful uh, and then next we have high horsepower that's going to be there mainly for the Drake's ult. Uh, it's going to one-shot it even outside of G-Max, and I should be faster guaranteed as long as I get my sticky webs up with War Beetle. And then finally we have Drain Punch, which is mainly going to be there for the Snorlax. Uh, because I do expect a G-Max versus G-Max fight, Drain Punch is going to help me win that. Onto the EVs. Uh, as much as I wanted to change this to Adamant, um, I need to be at like 140 speed. If you look at um, Dracovish, you can see he's the same speed as the Dracozolt would be. Um, and I think the Dracozolt is likely going to be Choice Scarfed, but the Sticky Webs are going to neutralize that Choice Scarf, uh, so he would be at 139. And without going Jolly, I can't outspeed him. Uh, so I need to be Jolly, even though I would like to be adamant for the damage this week. Up next we have the Dracovish. Like I said before, this is going to be a speed tie with the Dracozolt, so ideally I don't have him fighting Dracozolt this week. But uh, we're going to be running Choice Band, Strong Jaw, Fish's Rend, Crunch, Earthquake, Ice Fang. So the reasoning's here. Fish's Rend, good damage to everything except the Jellicent. That's what the Crunch is there for. Earthquake is there for the opposing uh, Dracozolt. And then we are carrying Ice Fang for the Whimsicott. Um, we could have carried Iron Head, but I felt that Ice Fang was a little better because it also hits the Dracozolt on the Switch, so that's the idea behind that. Um, no Dragon move. I did debate on Dragon Rusher Outrage as the last move slot, but I felt that Ice Fang was a better option. Eevees, uh, 252 attack, 252 speed, 4 special defense with max speed. Like I said, we have to speed tie the Dracozolt at least. And in webs, we will outspeed everything else because Drake is also the only one that's likely to be scarfed. Uh, up next, we have what I'm expecting to be probably my big sweeper this week would be Gardevoir. Uh, Gardevoir is going to be running an expert belt with Trace, Moonblast Psychic, Calm Mind, Mystical Fire, 252 speed, 252 special attack, same thing as the Rillaboom. I need it to be faster than the Drake is ult, and unless it is timid, it's not going to be faster. Um, Moves wise, Moonblast is there as good stab. Um, I had looked into putting. Uh, I'll explain that in a second. Moonblast is there for good stab. Psychic is there to hit the Conkelder, um, as well as the Moonblast, but Moonblast is mainly there for Dracozolt. Calm Mind to set up. I have a couple setup opportunities, namely Jellicent is the best this week with Calm Mind that I can take advantage of. I can try and do it with Weezing, but I can only get one off with Weezing because I'll die to a Sledge Bomb otherwise. Um, so, I have a couple ways to do it. Uh, Jellicent is the main way to set it up, though. And then finally, Mystical Fire, because I have a feeling the S Cavalier is coming. Uh, specifically to stop this Gardevoir. And Mystical Fire is going to two-shot it. Um, unfortunately, it doesn't one-shot even with a Calm Mind, but uh, if I make a prediction on when it's coming in, then it's going to be two-shot. So, that's the idea with the moves there. Uh, the big thing with Gardevoir is that at this speed, it outspeeds everything as long as the Dracozolt is the one that's scarfed like I think it's going to be. Uh, it'll outspeed Whimsicott, it'll outspeed 
uh, not Charizard because Charizard doesn't get hit by the sticky webs and not Zatu. But everything else it'll be faster than. So the big one is the Whimsicott. It would be faster then. Next we have Orbeetle. Orbeetle is the Suicide Lead Orbeetle set that I have brought a few times in the past. Its main job is to set up sticky webs and then it's carrying Psychic, Bug Buzz, and Shadow Ball to give it as much coverage as possible. I should say the other big reason I have two Psychic types this week. Um, the Conkeldur is a big problem with Mach Punch. Um, and both of these things, both Gardevoir and Orbeetle, four times resist Mach Punch. So I like having two different ways to take Mach Punches just in case one of them goes down, which I'm expecting Orbeetle to go down pretty quickly. I mean, he is the suicide lead. It depends on what he leads in turn, but I mean, it's possible Orbeetle ends up making it later into the battle, but we'll see. Um, like I said, Sticky Web, Psychic, Pug Buzz, Shadow Ball is two stabs, and Shadow Ball is there for the Jellicent. Um, I did have a couple other options. I debated on putting Body Press for the Snorlax, or putting U-Turn to help switch out, but I felt Shadow Ball was more valuable, because otherwise Jellicent could threaten me out. Uh, up next we have Umbreon. Umbreon is pretty standard. Uh, it's the one I've brought most weeks. It's going to be Leftovers with Synchronized Wish Protect, Foul Play, Toxic. Um, Wish Protect, Foul Play is practically standard on my Umbreon at this point. The thing I had been debating on was the fourth slot, if I wanted Toxic, Yawn, or Heal Bell. I ended up going Toxic, uh, because Foul Play will do a decent amount to the Chelicent. But having Toxic is very nice against his team because he doesn't have a Steel type outside of S Cavalier. So I'll be able to I'll be able to Toxic just about anything. And uh, S Cavalier it can come in on Umbreon, but it does take a good amount of damage from Foul Play. So I don't expect it to be um, his best Umbreon switching. Uh, so yeah, the Foul Play is interesting. It does about a third to Conkeldur, uh, so it won't be an instant kill, and I can't stay in against Conkeldur, uh, which sort of, uh, but before I segue into that, let me explain the EVs, uh, HP, Special Attack, and Special Defense. The Special Attack was on here just because one of the sets I had uh, was running Dark Pulse over Foul Play, but that's probably going to go into Defense instead. Uh, like I said, Conkeldur threatens me out. And that leads us to our last thing, Mudsdale. Mudsdale's here for the two main things I said gave me problems, Conkeldur and Drakazult. The only way Conkeldur really bugs me, if it's Facade or Ice Punch. Um, but even, why did I hit that? Even if um, it is Ice Punch, I start getting my stamina boosts off and I'll be okay. That's the main reason we're running rest. So we're running Chesto Berry with stamina. And if you're not sure how stamina works, every time Mudsdale gets hit, it's going to get a plus one to defense. So if it takes a Mach Punch, now it's a plus one defense. If it takes a Psychic from Zatu, now it's a plus one defense. So it sort of snowballs itself. Um, and we're running Jesto Berry with Rest so that we can wake up immediately. We're running Body Press to take advantage of the stamina boosts. And um, this Muzzdale can also work as an effective Snorlax wall if I don't need it to deal with the Dracozole because this is a Bolt Beak switch in because it's a ground type. Um, and even if it hits with something like Dragon Claw or Ice Fang, the stamina boost to help ensure I'll be alive long enough to get my rest off. So he's mainly here as a Dracozole stop, but uh, he can also be used for other things. Earthquake is there as his other big stab, and then he has Sleep Talk in case I need to recover after I've used my Chesto Berry. The biggest problem for this Mudsdale is going to be the Weezing. He doesn't have a move that hits it, even a body press isn't going to be doing much. But other than that, there's not much that wants to deal with him. Maybe the Whimsicott, uh, Zatu can carry Energy Ball, the Jellicent possibly, but there's not many things he has that enjoy dealing with this Mudsdale. But yeah, that's going to be the team for the week. Um, like I said, the big problems are going to be Conkeldur, Dracozolt. As long as I can deal with them and not lose too many things along the way. I should be fine. Uh, but yes, thank you for watching and wish me luck.